How's it going guys? That time of year has come again, things are getting cold, and I'm getting a lot of questions about reptiles and brumation. So in this video, we're gonna go over what I do with my reptiles through winter. So we'll start outside here with the outdoor animals because things are pretty easy out here to be honest, and it's all about having things set up in advance. So with my turtles here, you can see, they have a lot of water to stay in as well as they have that box over there. Now fill that with a bunch of uh, substrate they can bury in if they like. But typically these guys just spend over winter down in the water, they just stay low, they don't do much activity wise, they sort of just sit there and hang out and uh, they do absolutely fine, so turtles, easy. Then it comes to the blue tongues, now these guys are really easy as well, and that's because of how I've set up these pits. So if we have a look in here, you can see each one has a big box hide. Now this is their main hide that they're going to sleep in and use all the time, and of course it doubles as a bunker down spot for winter brumation. So what I've done with these is I filled them full of this sugarcane mulch. And this is a good substrate for lizards to bury in and keep dry. That's really important for these reptiles over winter for these blue tongues is to keep nice and dry and safe. So having these secure boxes that are raised up off the ground and underneath this cover here is gonna keep them out of the rain and the elements. So as you can see, it's been raining today. You can see where the rain is hitting. And then in where the box is, all under there, it's nice and dry. So these guys will stay in these boxes throughout the whole of winter. And just be nice and bunkered down and safe. They might come out a bit if it's a nice sunny day. But they know where to go, they know where it's safe and secure because I've had those boxes in here for quite a while now. So they're used to it and uh, I've never had a problem with this sort of method. Again, it's about keeping them dry, safe and secure. If they're nice healthy animals, then they're going to love it out here and It'd be great. So a few basic facts about reptiles and brumation and winter time. During this time of year, you're gonna see that your reptiles are really lethargic, not really interested in food, and uh, just acting a lot different than they normally would during the warmer months. So don't panic if you notice your reptiles are starting to go off food or not come out of their hides and being really lazy and unmotivated with life because it's basically just because the temperatures are dropping and this naturally kicks in in their brain that it's time to shut down and bunker down for the winter. For young animals under a year old, like this beautiful little alpine blotch blue tongue I've got here, for animals like this, I normally don't give them a winter in their first year, just to give them a good start in life, because oftentimes in the wild, that first winter is a big killer for a lot of these baby animals. Maybe they didn't find enough resources beforehand, so they don't have the reserves stocked up to keep them sustained throughout that period, or the cold simply just gets them, so through that first year when they might be a bit more delicate than a nice, strong, sturdy adult, I like to keep things warmer until the next season when they can get a full winter and by that time they'll be big enough to breed usually anyway depending on the species. So it just works out great. I get a lot of questions on how do you brumate the animals, like what do you have to do and you don't really have to do much of anything, they'll pretty much do it themselves as long as the temperatures are dropping, as long as they have the right setup where they can go bury away or do whatever it is they would naturally do when the cold weather comes, then they'll probably do it. Um, obviously you don't want to be offering food really because they're not going to eat it. And as they start going away more and more, you can start turning off the lighting and heating to match that until the point comes where they stop coming out completely and then you can just turn everything off. Whether or not you keep heating on during winter or not, it's going to depend on the species you have and where you live, how cold it's going to get, wherever their enclosure is. If they occur naturally in the area, you shouldn't need to give them any heating and they should do fine as long as their setup's right and they have the right conditions. If it's, a, say, a tropical species and you live down south, you might need to give it a little bit of heat throughout the night and whatnot to uh, stop it from getting too cold where you might get problems like respiratory infections or anything like that. So winter and brumation is really not something you should be worried about as long as your animal's healthy and in good condition and you have the appropriate setup. There should be no worries and it's going to be a nice long sleep for the animal and it's going to give you a little bit of a break for a few months so enjoy it while you can. So for example I've got my western blue tongues here and I haven't changed anything with the heating and lighting of these guys and they can just pick up on the natural ambient temperature drop outside and they can feel it throughout the night as well and it makes them slow down. They rarely come out now during the day. I still have their lighting on for now but I'm starting to decrease the daylight hours which basically just means I'm turning off the lights a little bit earlier each night. And so they're just sort of hiding out. There's a tail back there. So I imagine they're both under here. And so they're just hanging out in here and 
they'll eventually just stop coming out completely. They'll find a little spot to bury down and that'll be it. They'll be, you know, asleep for a few months until the weather warms back up and it's back into business. And so my bearded dragon's pretty funny. She was the first one to go and she's actually buried herself right underneath this rock. You can't see, she's just sort of plugged it up. And this is what they do in the wild, you know, they dig a big burrow and that's where they stay for a few months while it's really cold and then eventually they emerge when it warms up again. So again, super simple. She felt the cold, she's gone down and she's gonna stay there for a few months now and we're gonna have an empty enclosure to look at. So yeah, it's a bit sad to see them go, but hey, it's fine. It's part of their natural process and it's good for them. Just like the beardy, my mountain dragons have slowed right down, not to the point where they've dug down a little hole for the winter, but they're really not eating that much anymore and I just set up their whole bottom of their enclosure with a bunch of new gum leaves so what they'll do is they'll just go and bury under these and that's where they'll stay for the winter. They haven't got quite cold enough for that yet but these are quite a cold tolerant species so I'm not surprised they're not away yet but by the end of the month I reckon these guys will be down and it'll be the same thing again. I'll turn all their lights off once they stop coming out and that'll be it for a few months. It is a bittersweet time of year though because it's nice that the animals will be going away and you can have a bit of a break for a while but at the same time you're not going to be able to see them and enjoy them and you really do start to miss them so it is really bittersweet but hey it's part of their natural cycle and for animals like these that I'm trying to breed it's absolutely essential. So winter time ain't too bad for my Boyd's Forest Dragons because all these guys really do is just sit there and look pretty. They pretty much stay on the same branch the whole time and do nothing. They might feed every now and then if it's a bit of a warmer day or something like that, but yeah. They just sit there and look pretty like this beautiful little girl here. This one that I held back from the first time I bred them and she's an absolute stunner. But yeah, it's not too bad with the boids because at least they're still out and visible. So yeah, the main change for them is just their activity level. They just basically sit there and do nothing the whole time. And all I do is just decrease the amount of humidity just a little bit for them to sort of simulate their dry season where they're from because cold and wet for long periods of time will probably cause a respiratory infection. So you want to keep it a little bit less humid and yeah, they do fine. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helped you with any of your winter or brumation questions. I hope all your reptiles get through it well. And if you want to see more Australian reptiles, make sure you subscribe. Leave any more questions in the comments below and I'll see you next time.